Hello, this is Nadia and this is Jacob. Is that me? I'm Mrs. Carrie. Right, Mrs. Carrie. So today we're going to be discussing the silent patient. I read it. The patient was very silent. Anyways, I read this after you recommended it because you read this a while ago and then you said, hey, it'd be fun if you read this and we talked about it. And I then, read it oh, yeah, about a year ago. Yeah. Um, you got it for my birthday, so it was actually a little bit more than a year ago. And do you not remember this? I'm awesome. He, he gets, it's so meaningful how you remember your gifts to me. <laughs> I read it in like a day. Um, it was an overnight binge, which I do often with books that I like. I read a lot of books that are thriller-ish like this, but Jake doesn't. He reads a lot of fantasy and um, Stephen King, Brandon Sanderson. So it's a, it's a little bit different. And this is also a new author. What's his name? How do you pronounce it? Alex? I don't know. It's Greek, but... Michaelides. Michaelides. I don't know. Baby, say it. I don't want people to make fun of us. I don't know. Alex Michaelides. I don't know. If, I don't know how it's pronounced. So how would you pronounce this it? This is the first Try time. pronouncing it. <laughs> this is the first time. No, you time. pronounce it. You try. I'm, I'm butchering it. Alex M. <laughs> For those of you who haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. I think from what you've told me, you highly recommend it too, right? I don't highly recommend it, but I do recommend it if you like these types of thriller books. I enjoyed it because it was a super fast read. The chapters are really short and it's it moves along, you know, at a good pace. The characters at first were kind of flat to me until, and the whole premise was kind of boring to me at first. You know, there's a patient who wasn't speaking. She murdered her husband. Uh, apparently, and then there's the therapist trying to... Theo, yeah. He's trying to, you know, crack the case. He's trying to figure it out. And he acts more like an investigator than a therapist. Um, he's more like a cook who just can't crack that egg. Yeah, but you're really reading the book for the twist, and that's what kept me going. I knew there was a big twist on the back of the book. It says, you know, like, oh, you the, you thriller readers are have no idea what's coming for you. And I like the twist, but I have to say I was really in it because I was like, what is this twist going to be? It's got to, like, you're, you're constantly trying to guess, you know, what is going to happen and what's how's the mystery going to be solved? And then it's a, an interesting twist. So it was worth it because it was super fast uh, and uh, fun, relatively fun. So why don't you highly recommend it? Why do you only recommend it? Um, because of the beginning a little bit? or No, I, I recommend it to people who like the, who like, like thrillers and stuff. Okay. Um, but not just anyone. Like, you wouldn't recommend it to Brian Sanderson uh, fans. fans. No, I feel like you have to be into this, in, in the mood for something like this, you know? Because you're a Brian Sanderson fan and you like it. Yeah, I mean, it has a good uh, build-up and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's very different than an epic fantasy, obviously, and it, it, the, the book is really quick, like Jake mentioned, so I agree with Jake. I think that the beginning was a little slower. It's kind of like, where this where is this leading to? I would say the first three or four chapters, you're kind of like, okay, where is this going? And then it picks up, and then it really moves along really well, and I would say there's one inciting incident, almost. Uh, not necessarily inciting incident, but inciting incident-esque um, after another where it just kind of keeps you wanting to read more and more and then to, because the chapters are so short you just want to kind of finish the chapters and then you know you want to keep reading and then I think that makes it really quick and easy way to finish a book pretty fast. You start to um, get invested in the main character the narrator who's trying to crack the case because you start to learn more about him and his life and his marriage and all this stuff that puts more it makes it more personal for him to figure this out. And it puts a good, you start to question the narrator a little bit, what kind of a person they are, that sort of thing. So it, it adds a bit of intrigue. I mean, he's a therapist, but he's breaking a lot of rules all the time. <laughs> so you're like- That's true. You're like, this guy is a bit, he's kind of losing it. You know, he, he his life is kind of falling apart a bit. And- You know, one thing about the book is the tr truth, the absolute truth is not revealed until the last couple chapters really so that's what makes it really interesting because literally you're on the edge until the very very end and there's no time wasted in a sense of that and doesn't make it seem like oh man the ending was rushed it was kind of like whoa you know the way that it's written i think it makes it kind of tie it together pretty beautifully and you realize why they just in decided to insert the absolute truth at the very end I would say it'd be interesting to reread because it changes your perspective of all the events prior 
somewhat. So That's true. It'd be uh, it'd be a pretty interesting to reread probably one day. Yeah. All right. Spoilers. So. Well, okay. We if if you if it. you're gonna read it, leave once you have the spoiler revealed. I don't think there's much of a point to read it. So the main character, the narrator uh, that we're hearing a lot of perspectives from, is Theo. He's a therapist. He's getting this new job. He's really interested in this patient, um, Alicia, who doesn't speak, who murdered her husband, who like, who, who, there's a lot of mystery around this patient and he really wants to kind of understand her, help her out. We don't really know why, except for the fact that like some of her, some of her life reminds him of his own in a sense, right? So he kind of wants to, like I got the sense of like he wanted to fix her in order to better understand himself kind of thing. But of course there's this like other idea of why does he really care about fixing this one patient so much? And then because I'm not a therapist, I'm like, well, that's what therapists do. So that's how I justified it. If your therapist does that, run. <laughs> it's what? a silent one, so you got to watch out for it. <laughs> Theo, he has this unfulfilled marriage. He, his wife is... his. Theo's marriage is unfulfilling to him. He's cheating on she's cheating on him. She's an actress who's cheating on her husband with her. It's more than unfulfilling. Partner. Okay. He, oh she is cheating on him and he finds out but doesn't want to say anything because he's afraid of ruining the marriage. Yeah. So he just creepily follows her everywhere. He follows her everywhere and he almost like notes down mentally her lies and tries to like figure it out or find out like what like really the reason for her cheating and blames the guy that she's cheating on him with rather yeah. than like actually like subjugate his wife to a confrontation about yeah. what is happening this c reveals the kind of person he is he'd rather just hide everything under the surface and this is going on this is the b plot while he's trying to figure out what's going on with alicia at the mental institution so this is kind of going on at the same time. You're kind of wondering, where is this heading? What's going to go on? And then can I reveal this, the twist? Mm -hmm. What happens is there's a, a, a clever kind of... Uh, the author's sort of playing with your perspective of time also because we find out later on that all the sequences with his wife where he's discovering her cheating actually take place took before... Place, yeah. Took place before the events of him investigating Alicia's case at the mental institution. So we find out that he was following the guy that his wife is cheating on him with. Mm -hmm. so I think her, his name is Gabriel. Her lover. Yeah. Yeah, Gabriel. He uh, finds him and he, at first he, he wants to kill him. He wants to hit him over the head with a rock. And then he thinks, no, I got to do something really good. Yeah. And you're like, okay, he's losing his marbles. And then what we know about Alicia's case is that she saw a man... And she's finally talked about this. She's finally started to talk near the end of the book. She saw a man come into her place with a hood um, and a knife. And then we see him go into the guy who's cheating on his, with his, his wife's place. They, he goes into his home and confronts his wife wearing exactly the same thing. So he is the guy who Alicia claims was stalking her mm -hmm. and right before she killed Gabriel. And she killed Gabriel because, which because, is what I loved about yeah, the story. Yeah, do you story. want to explain that? He ties Gabriel up and, and, Alicia. and Alicia up. And then he basically asks Gabriel, like, choose yourself or your wife. And This is like a sick game to get back on the guy who's having sex with his wife. Basically. Yeah, exactly. And, and He's, like, trying to fuck up their marriage. Yeah, and it's interesting. It's, it's good to note that, like, during Theo's uh, exploration of Alicia's past... Um, in order to quote unquote fix her, he discovers that she's suffered from a lot of childhood trauma. Like, you know, I think her mom died and her father wished that like she had died instead and she was a painter who was successful, but then she had this really like, I wouldn't say chaotic, but really like unhealthy relationship with her husband in the sense that she wasn't really getting like the appreciation that he she deserved and obviously he was cheating on her she is the one who's basically trying to make it work in a lot of sense so she, the one thing i feel like what i got is that she clings on to this idea that like gabriel loves me right and she kind of tries to justify it and then when gabriel chooses himself and says let me go she, and yeah he's like kill her instead of me basically yeah exactly and then she kind of loses it 
Yeah. And that's how she kills Gabriel. <laughs> she shoots him in the face. She shoots him in the face. And she's like, and it's like important to note that because it's not just like, oh, because of this one incident where he said, you know what, kill my wife. Although that's really bad. It was a buildup. It's a yeah. buildup of the fact that she's in an unhappy marriage and she and she feels like she's the only one who is trying to make it work. So throughout the whole book, we think there's going to be a reveal that she didn't actually kill her husband. But the reveal is actually that the therapist persuaded her inadvertently to kill her husband, which yeah. she ended up doing. So she is guilty, but so is the therapist who basically kidnapped them both kidnapped them and held them at gunpoint and basically led them to this situation out of some kind of sick sense of revenge and the reason why he's so obsessed with alicia now after the fact is because he wants to help her and convince her that what what is he trying to do he's basically trying to help her and be a good therapist and make her he's trying to like basically it's a sick way like it's revealed in the last chapter that he really wanted to talk to her because but he realizes that she knows who he is she realizes she recognizes his voice she realizes he's the one who tied them up he decides oh shit she realizes who i am so he tries to kill her basically it's it's like shows how sick he really was because he was really trying to find the person he tormented that he could have just left alone and she was silent so she wasn't gonna say anything and he would have gotten away with and he would have gotten away with it but he just kind of like it's almost like he liked it like he liked the control of it or something like that and he even though I believe that even though it was disguised in like him trying to help her, quote unquote, it was really that he was trying to like find her perspective and kind of like almost like in a sick way, I feel like relate to her in that sense that, hey, my wife cheated on right. me, your husband cheated on you, you and I should yeah. be like, and none of this is like revealed in the actual text, but it's just like the subliminal message that I felt and I interpreted while reading it. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, thing to pull her back because I think, you know, there are little clues throughout that she, Alicia, hates her therapist and we don't understand why. Like, she attacks him a few times and we don't realize later that she knows that he's the one who set all this up. And, of course, now if we read the book again, we'd be instead reading about a criminal's perspective who's obsessed with this woman for these horrible reasons, who ends up trying to kill her at the end. Whereas yeah. when we're reading at first, we think it's a therapist-patient and, and relationship. And we feel bad for him. We feel we're bad like, for him. Oh my him. God, yeah. his wife, like he's such a good husband. But then you realize at the end also in his marriage, it's not as like black and white as he's good, she's bad. Like he really likes control. Yeah. And his lack of control, like he didn't, I think that, I think that he didn't want to leave his wife because he didn't want to lose her like feel like he lost you know he wanted to feel like he won and he he wanted her to be reliant on him you know like i think he's already she's already financially reliant on him so i think he wanted her to to be depend on him and he was willing to kind of like suffer through quote unquote her infidelity in order to get that sense of control back and then you know when gabriel further threatened that sense of control by like sleeping with his wife you know he didn't just like kill him out of fit of rage he wanted to like gain that control back by making gabriel himself feel the loss of control that he felt gabriel made him feel so it's kind of like reminds me of a narcissist you know a person who just can't see outside of themselves like these people that you see who are like well i'm the mother i gave you life and all these other things that they say to justify their own actions Mm -hmm everything they're doing is really Mm self-serving that's how i felt like with theo it's like i'm helping alicia you know i am the one who helped her realize how bad her husband was you know i am helping my wife look at how good and it's me 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 and even though he does serve them in certain ways his purpose for serving them is not like independent of of himself it's all very self-serving it's all inserting himself to their lives and it's all so that it's all transactional yeah in the end he gets caught because uh alicia is able to write in her notebook as so she's yeah dying he like he, he yep he he basically tries to kill her through um injecting her by injecting her and she's able to write like exactly what happened and he actually even before he finds out he gets promoted into director you have to go your mind has to go with a lot of exaggerations you have to be okay to go with some wacky stuff that I mean, wouldn't it's happen a story. in real life it's a story but i do not 
I do not recommend this for people who study psychology or psychiatry or therapy because I've read reviews of people who are like, oh, I, you know, this is so ridiculous, all these codes broken, all this stuff that would never happen, you know. So I feel like I was able to enjoy it because I have no connection to that field of study and all that. Um, So if you like a fun thriller that you could get through in like a day if you want, um, it's totally worth it and it's a really great read. But if you're, like, looking at it from, like, um, realistic, medical, more realistic stuff, like, it's not... It's, it's a not, story. It doesn't, it doesn't it. really hold true to how things may be conducted in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, it may, because there are some, like, messed up therapy, therapy centers in the past that has been, like, discovered, and it doesn't follow codes, but that's not the point. The point is just the mystery around it and really trying to uncover who this person is who is narrating us the story and really how reliable his perspective really is i will say there are a lot of threads that go nowhere but that's kind of the point because it's like mr x but there are a lot of mr x you know you think they're, they're purposely you think like alicia's them. brother had something to do with it you think the the um art her art friend or whatever has something to do with it so there's a lot of threads but during those sequences you're learning more about alicia's life we forgot to mention that we also get quite a few moments of Alicia's journal. Um, So we get access to her mind throughout the story. Um, Alicia gives Theo her journal. Yes, but we're always, we're reading it throughout the whole book. Yeah, we're reading it throughout the book, so then it becomes like back and forth between... dual narrators. Yeah, exactly. But... It's, it's, Alicia gives Theo the, her journal in order to kind of like, it's almost like she's playing the sick game that he is. In the sense, right? Instead of, like, reporting him or really saying, like, this person is the one who kidnapped or accusing him publicly about it Mm -hmm. in some cases. It's really, like... Well, she's just so depressed. She's really... She's so depressed, but it's almost like she wants to... I don't know. What do? Why do you think she, like, gave him the journal? Instead of just being, like, telling him, like, I know who you are. I know what you did. I don't know. I feel like it's because she really is curious to like what what kind of sickle he is maybe and kind of trying to like understand the situation in itself. I mean, we can only guess because it, it's not written over the text. So it's really subtext, but in that way, it could be that like she wants him to know who she was so that she, she can realize maybe who he destroyed. She had a dream. She was painting, you know, she had a life. She's silent because she's... Tr- that's the only agency that she has, right? Is that she, these people are trying to make her do something, trying to get her to tell her story. But like, she felt like she was made to kill her husband. She's made to kind of like be in a relationship where she was lied to. And she was made to like grow up in this family where she didn't get the nurture, nurturing love that she deserved. So I think like her voice is the only thing she's trying to hold on. She's try, She can have as her only idea of agency and she really wants to hold on to it which is why i think she gets a journal instead of outrightly saying you know what really happened do you recommend the book i already told you i highly recommend it in the beginning oh. <laughs> i highly recommend it and you recommend it i recommend it i wasn't as impressed with the second book um I'm, you couldn't even get through it you know? i'm on chapter five for like five months in a row yeah but like i i hope that i can push through it and finish it it just doesn't gravitate me towards the same way but i think that nonetheless i hope that the author keeps writing because i think um he did really good job with this book it'll make a good movie i'm pretty sure they're turning it into a movie or show i'm I'm sure they would yeah and i am really excited to like watch the movie when it comes out if it comes out and read more stories like this so if you have recommendations and you read the silent patient put it in the comments below and oh yeah yeah thank you everyone for watching thank you see you next time bye bye